everyone. Welcome back to lecture series on aerospace propulsion. So in the previous lecture, we have seen the what are the different parameters affects the thrust produced by an aircraft uh, engine. So in that we have seen, seen how an uh, airspeed of airspeed uh, affects the thrust produced by the engine and the nozzle configuration, mass flow rate of air enters inside the engine and variation in the altitude, all these different parameters causing the variation in the thrust produced by the aircraft engine we have seen in the uh, previous class. Okay, So, in today's class we are going to see something about the engine performance parameters Okay, that is what are the different parameters we use to measure the performance of a particular engine that is what we are going to see in this today's class. So, in that uh, regard we are going to see four performance parameters propulsion efficiency, thermal efficiency overall efficiency and the thrust specific fuel consumption. These are the four different parameters we generally use to measure the performance of an aircraft engine. Okay. So, uh, say, so how exactly we say whether this particular engine is uh, working good or not is basically by using these performance parameters. Okay. That is how effectively it is producing the thrust ports. Okay. So, in that regard, first we are going to see what is this propulsive efficiency. Okay. So, what is this propulsive efficiency? Is basically, it is the uh, ratio of uh, thrust power divided by the rate of kinetic energy added to the engine airflow. So, in general, you could say what is the propulsive efficiency? Is that how effectively the kinetic energy available in your uh, airflow, which is coming out of your nozzle, is converted into thrust power. In simple term, what is the propulsive efficiency? It is how effectively an engine is able to convert the available kinetic energy of your exit airflow into the thrust power. That is what we call it as the propulsive efficiency. So, from this definition, uh, nita P is equal to thrust power divided by the kinetic energy available or added to the uh, engine airflow, which I can write it as nita P is equal to uh, ut okay this half term so you know kinetic energy is of mv square right this is the kinetic energy okay so kinetic energy added to your flow here uh, m dot a into 1 plus f into u the m dot a into 1 plus f u okay so in this if i'm going to multiply by u what I have that is u square, this is the kinetic energy of your flow which is coming out of your nozzle and this is the kinetic energy of your flow which is uh, entering inside your uh, engine. So, the difference will be the one that uh, how much amount of kinetic energy you are basically adding to your flow, right. What is the definition we said? The thrust power divided by the uh, kinetic energy added to your flow. Already my flow which is having a velocity of u enters inside the aircraft so that obviously having certain amount of kinetic energy. So, I am accelerating my flow by bonding the fuel and uh, um, expanding it through the nozzle I am accelerating. But at the end the difference is the one which will give you how much amount of kinetic energy you have added to your flow. So, that is the uh, equation this 1 by 2 term I have taken to the top. So, nita P is equal to 2 thrust into velocity will give you thrust power. Okay, that is force into velocity will give you power. Okay, so here we know the thrust equation uh, that is 2u into m dot a into 1 plus f u e minus u plus a into p minus p a divided by same m dot a into 1 plus f into u square divided minus u u e square minus u square. Okay, now I am going to make an assumption that is say my nozzle is unchoked. Unchoked means my exit pressure will be equal to ambient pressure or you could say it is an ideal operation where my exit pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. So, what will happen this PE equal to PA means this term will become 0 and I am going to assume that the uh, compared to the mass flow rate of air, the mass flow rate of my fuel is uh, say m dot f is very much less than m dot a. Okay, So, if I am going to make the assumption then 
that m dot f by m dot a will be very much less than one. So I can neglect uh, one. That is uh, fuel air ratio. So if I'm going to substitute that, so what I'll have, uh, if I simplify this equation, we will have nita p is equal to two u divided by u plus u e. This I can write it as two divided by one plus u e by u. Okay. So this is another form of your uh, propulsive efficiency. So we could say this is a for the ideal engine. So ideal engine means where uh, your uh, nozzle is unchoked or uh, your exit pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So under that condition, we are able to get the uh, different equation for this propulsion eff efficiency in terms of the velocity ratio. So what is this u e? Basically, it is the velocity at the exit and u is the velocity at the inlet of our engine. Okay. So from this, you could uh, make a uh, make out some uh, statements that is say when we will have the maximum propulsion efficiency. So you could say when my u e is equal to u. So what is going to happen? This u e is equal to u means this will become 1. So 2 divided by 2 which will become 1. So you could say your nita p is 100%. Your propulsion efficiency is 100% when your exit velocity is equal to your uh, flight velocity or inlet flow velocity. Right. So uh, that means when we will have the uh, maximum propulsion efficiency when my UE is equal to UA. But if my UE is equal to UA, what happens? We know uh, thrust is equal to Okay, so under the condition where your UE is equal to UA, what is going to happen? Your thrust will become zero. Okay, so when you expect an engine to produce 100% propulsive efficiency, what is going to happen? Your uh, thrust force will become zero. So if the thrust force is becoming zero, means is there any point in uh, operating that engine? Means no. Okay, that means you won't be able to get the 100% propulsive efficiency for any aircraft engine. Now, it's the other way around. When, uh, if the exhaust speed, if the exit velocity is very much higher than uh, the uh, oh, air speed, what is going to happen? Your UE by U is going to be very, very high. Okay. So, if the exit velocity is going to be very high compared to the inlet velocity, what is going to happen? This UE by U is going to be very much greater than 1, which will result in your nita P will become 0. That is, if the difference between your exit velocity and inlet velocity is very high means, the propulsive efficiency will be keep on coming down. Okay. So, from this you could say, uh, for an aircraft engine in which the difference between the uh, flow velocity is less, which will have the maximum propulsive efficiency. In an engine, if the difference between exit and inlet velocity is very high means, there you will have the very least amount of propulsive efficiency. So, you could say the turboprop is the one which is having maximum propulsive efficiency because what we do in the turboprop engine, we accelerate and a huge amount of mass flow rate to very less velocity. That means basically the velocity difference between exit and inlet is very small. Okay. That's why we have the maximum or higher propulsive efficiency for the turboprop engine. Whereas for the turbojet engine, what happens? The exit velocity is very, very high compared to the top of your inlet velocity because there we accelerate a small amount of mass to very high velocity. That's why among the engines, your turbojet engine is having the least amount of propulsive efficiency. Okay. So, by combining these two together, that is in the turbofan, a certain portion, we are having the less amount of mass is accelerated to high velocity and some portion, higher, huge amount of mass load is accelerated to a lesser velocity. That's why your turboprop is a better 
bridge between your turbojet and turboprop engine okay so next one is thermal efficiency so what is this thermal efficiency is basically it is uh, power imparted to the engine airflow divided by the rate of energy uh, supplied in the fuel that is uh, what is the thermal efficiency is that the available thermal energy how effectively it is converted into the power that's what we call it as the thermal efficiency see what is this m dot f into qr that is the total amount of energy available in the fuel okay and what is this equation basically that is the kinetic energy of your uh, flow okay that is how effectively the thermal energy is converted into kinetic energy that's what we call it as the thermal efficiency okay next one is an overall efficiency so what is this overall efficiency basically it is the uh, product of your propulsive and thermal efficiency what we call it as the overall efficiency so it's depend on both propulsive as well as the thermal efficiency okay last performance parameter we are going to see is something about a specific fuel consumption okay so what is the specific fuel consumption is basically among the all the other parameters this specific fuel consumption will directly give you okay that is how much amount of money we are to spend for operating an aircraft that is for a per trip how much amount of money you can spend or you have to spend we can directly get from the specific fuel consumption so what is the definition for the specific fuel consumption is that that is it is the uh, fuel how much amount of fuel you need to burn in order to produce unique amount of thrust force what we call it as the uh, specific fuel consumption that is to produce one one newton of thrust how much amount of fuel i have to burn that's what we call it as the uh, specific fuel consumption that is m dot f by t equation for this tsfc we call it as m dot f by t it is uh, the mass of fuel has to be burned in order to produce even the amount of thrust okay so this is what we call it as a specific fuel consumption so with this i'll finish this today's lecture like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates